Welcome to my video by Tangulations. This is a video if you already know how to tangle or at least know the principles or the method of it because today I'm going to teach a bubble string. It kind of seems only appropriate that uh, whilst we're doing this in New Zealand, I'm doing this one video, New Zealand's in a lockdown, um, we have termed the little category of hanging out in your little family as your little bubble. So I thought we might have a little bit of a play with a bubble string. So what you will need to get started is a tile. You can either choose a original Zentangle tile or uh, an apprentice tile if you like slight a slightly bigger format or something in between, don't really mind, any of those three. Uh, you'll also need a Micron pen or another type of fine liner, uh, a pencil, a little pencil useful for drawing our string, uh, a tortillon for blending, and if you prefer, I quite often use a 2B pencil for um, some slightly deeper, darker shading. So if you can get all that stuff together, or if you're already set and ready, then that's all good. And we'll get started. So I've got my little square tile here, and we need to first draw a string. Now this string uh, that we're going to work with is uh, what I want to do is to draw something a little bit like a Venn diagram. So. <laughs> If you're uh, a very precise person, uh, a Venn diagram string might look like this, uh, but I don't want you drawing perfect circles. That doesn't sound like uh, very Zentangle to me. Instead, I want you to do something a little bit more uh, organic, shall we say, and ends up looking a little bit like this. So the best way to get this type of string is to take your tile and pop on it three, three dots. So instead of doing a... Uh, corner dots we might instead have a three triple now I'm probably going to draw a little bit uh, harder than I normally would um, it's just so you can see it on the screen so once we've got our three dots here we're now going to do our border but we're going to join them up so what we just need to do is from this first dot that I've got here I'm just going to draw a little teardrop shape that goes round and comes back to the dot and then I'm going to loop round in a bit of a curve till I reach my next corner dot. I'm going to rotate the tile and I'm going to do that same action again. So I'm going to draw a little teardrop. It's going to intersect the first teardrop shape that we did, go back to my corner dot, and then I'm going to zoom round and get to my last dot. I'll rotate round again and start from the dot. I'm going to go round, loop through the other two and then round to draw my first dot. So I've now got my organic Venn string. Uh, what we're going to do today, and we're going to play with these, is I'm going to experiment with merging some tangles as we merge some of the uh, tangles together, and I'm going to experiment with a bit of a repetitive enhancement on this one. So we've got our string, all is happy. Of course, you can pause this video whenever you like. Uh, otherwise, I am going to get started on the first tangle. Now there's one particular tangle, it's quite a difficult tangle, um, but it lends itself beautifully to the string that we've now got in the very middle here. So we've got a sort of warped triangle, well mine's got a bit of a curve to it, and then I've got these little petal shapes that come out and I've got three of them. And so the tangle that I want to do here is called Trinity. So the way that Trinity works is, we can really cheat with this lovely string, is for a start, fill in a little triangle inside that one that you've got in the middle. And then I'm going to take this triangle and I'm going to fill. So some people like to go round on the border edge. Other people just like to hover across. Whichever way you want to fill it, that's all fine. And I've left a nice border around the outside edge, or one might call it an order. And I'm following the curve of the string line to give me the echoing line that I've got here uh, around that triangle. Once you've got that filled, we're going to extend this line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this string line as a bit of a trace. And I'm going to follow my pen, follow that curve, but then I'm going to extend it out to leaving the same gap here, almost like an inner aura on that particular place. I'm going to rotate the tile round, and I'm going to do the same thing with the next length of that triangle. This one's going to curve round to here. I'll rotate the tile again, 
and I'll do it on that third triangle edge here but it, this one is going to curve right round into here Boop, perfect oh I'm back at the start now I'm going to use the string line so this time I'm going to take it from where this line intersects my string line and I'm going to follow my string line exactly with my pen and cover it over to reach that point I'm going to do the same thing again so rotate the tile follow that string line round to here and I've got one more to go so I'm going to follow that string line use it exactly rotate the tile if it makes it easier to draw really important to be constantly rotating your tile oh, I'm back at the start so this leaves us to now finish off or complete this pathway so I'm going to go from the two points I've got one on the outer side you can follow that string line back in to join until you hit the line and then I'm going to do the same with this one here and I'll rotate my tile I'll do the same one with the string line that I've got and then I'm going to do the same one echoing the line rotate round follow the string line Oop. follow this line join in and there we have a beautiful organic Trinity so Trinity when it's uh, looking a little bit more exact when I'm talking about exact, I mean if you're fitting it into a triangle shape, I'll just move that out of the way so you've got a background, is that's what it would look like if we were doing an equilateral triangle. We've obviously had a bit more fun with a little organic shape with it. So we're done. First tangle down. So what I wanted to do now was um, have a little play with uh, the next tangle. So what I'm going to do is choose one of these little loops, one of my little teardrop loops. I don't really mind which one and we'll start with a nice easy tangle trinity was quite a difficult one Whoa. although some of you may find it quite easy you never know so the one i'm going to do now is uh, called tipple he's a great little bubble tangle and it kind of seems appropriate that we should pop him in so i'm just going to choose one of these teardrops here and we're going to pop in some tipple remember when you're drawing tipple it's a case of popping these orbs around the outside of the section so I'm just going to follow this section edge here and the other to thing to remember when you're drawing your tipple orbs is that start your pen on an existing line because then it's much easier to hide the stop and the start of these orbs. I talk about orbs, I'm not talking about circles, nobody can draw the perfect circle apart from Giotto. Also doesn't matter what size or scale these orbs are in and if you go slightly over your section line that's not a worry either it's only a border so I've, with as with tipple i'm just going to go all around the outside section if i've got some spaces we don't need to worry about that we sort that out in the next one if they're not quite perfect circles i'm not worried once you've got the outside edge in then maybe pop in start filling in some of the gaps in the middle I'm not going to have a lot of space here for my tipple balls. Oop, there we go, got a few in. And then of course the last stage of drawing tipple is now to fill the little gaps in between. So sometimes in these spaces you might have room for a couple. Other times you might just be able to squeeze one in. Oh, this one I might do three. And always when I'm doing this, I'm just squeezing them in doesn't matter if they're not quite orb shaped if they end up looking a bit like pebbles that's fine too and then of course I've got some spaces around the section outside here as well I might not fill one in on that side squeeze them in Whoop. so there we go one little section filled with tipple Whew. so the next thing is just trying to merge some tangles together. So we might have a little bit of fun with one next door called Nazepel. And sometimes when you are merging uh, tangles, it can make it easier to use, use some lines that you've already got. So what I'm just going to do is Nazepel is obviously a grid based tangle and I'm going to use the orbs to give me some grid lines. And because we've got a bit of a crazy shape here, it doesn't look like we could fit a grid tangle into here, 
Oh, but we can, because we're going to do crazy mazeppel. So just for taking a line from between some of my tipple orbs, I'm just going to extend that line across into the section. And this one ooh, might go in a different direction, because remember, we're doing crazy mazeppel. So these grid lines don't have to match. In fact, they don't even have to be straight. They could have a bit of a wiggle on. And so I'm slowly filling the section with some lines to begin to make a bit of a grid. So just keep going until you've got enough sections that you're happy with. Maybe I want to squeeze one more in there. Whoop. There we go. It's a rather strange grid, but it still works. And then for an Azapel, you proceed to follow some of these grid lines, but when you get to any angles or corners or axes of the grid, take your pen up round and just curve them in. I always imagine it like you were trying to squeeze a blob of plasticine or Play-Doh into a real geometric cutter. And it just doesn't quite fit into those angles there. I'm going to use my beautiful string lines and section edges to guide me where to stop and fill in these lovely organic shapes inside the grid as we slowly follow all those grid lines with your pen but just taking the corners the angles off and so we move from very organized tipple balls into this crazy mix of a grid with orbs in it and I'm still following the lines following my section border following my string but just feeling all these grid with these little mazeppel creatures <laughs> until you Find you filled the section. Whew. So we've got a lovely edge around here, and we've just moved. You can see how those two sort of begin to merge together the tipple and the mazeppel. So, whoop, next tangle that I wanted to do was one called Twink. So, this is quite a cool wee tangle, but again uses orbs as a base. So, because we've already got a couple of orbs here with our tipple. I thought we might invent a few more off the other side. So what I'm just going to do is pop in some orbs randomly around this section edge. But what I do want to do is next to this section here, I want to include you to pop just one on this edge here, one on the string line and one in that top corner. The rest of them, it doesn't matter where they go, but just so we've got three that work on because of the tangle that we're going to pop here. Otherwise, I'm going to pop some orbs around the section edge. I'm just going to go slightly over, but that's OK. At times, you can change the scale of them. And once you've got those ones in around the outside edge, pop in a couple of orbs that are in the middle. And you'll note I've changed scale a lot. And that's what makes this one particularly fun. Once we've got all those orbs in, we're now going to join them up with some little paths. So I'm going to take one of these tipple balls here that's in this section, and I'm going to join them in a path to the orb next to it. And then I'm going to extend that path to go to the next one. If you want to use the string line as a route for your path, it makes it easier to guide, less worrying about a decision of exactly where you want to pop it. Just use those string lines. Uh, and we can proceed to go all the way around the edge of this section with the paths. I'm probably not going to include it down here because I'm going to use these orbs to do the next set of paths. So where we go next is we now have to join as many paths as you possibly can from as many orbs to as many orbs. So what I mean is I'm going to throw a path from this orb to this one, but then also this one to this one, and this one to this one, but then I also want to get one from here going across.
across and what you will need to employ is a little bit of drawing behind just as if you were drawing a holly bough planks if you come across a path that you've already drawn lift your pen over hover and pop it back down and so we're just going to join as many orbs and paths together as we can slowly fill up your section with these little paths so you'll get some that are very obvious to reach across others that you're going to fill in drawing behind and others that have to extend perhaps quite a few under paths as they go and sometimes you won't be able to complete them other times they're going to be quite obvious where they're going and you can keep doing this with this tangle until you think you've filled up it enough so some of you might find that you quite like it with just a few others might make it very very busy indeed with your paths where can I go I'll probably get one across there one from there to there so we're just going to fill these paths up to fill up the section just employing that drawing behind technique with the little orbs and that one is called twink so the next one I want to do because this may take you a wee while so just pause the video if you want to is I'm going to draw one in here in this teardrop shape but I'm going to draw cadent so cadent is again a, a, a dot base tangle but we want to treat it as a blossom so the reason why I was asking you to do three here is these can be some of the lengths of the petals so what you need to do is depending on the scale of yours just do some orbs just going around this section edge that uh, roughly are about the same sort of size and distance apart as the ones you've already drawn doesn't matter if they are a little bit different and I'm just going to nestle one across in that little nook on Trinity and once you've got a few round the outside edge then I'm going to pop one orb in roughly the middle there'll be different middles here and for cadent we employ a very simple S stroke or our double bend so from this middle orb here I'm now going to draw some S's so I'm going to take my pen round the orb and draw that S shape to come in at the other side of the orb around the edge. I'm going to rotate the tile and I'm going to do the same S shape around from every center down to the orbs around the perimeter of this section. And once I've gone all the way around, I am then going to join the ones around the edge to each other with that same S stroke. So I might choose to just go over slightly my, oh, this one I'm going to run into the twink, but that's okay. It's disappearing in behind. The one on the Trinity, probably not worth doing there. So I have now got my blossomed cadent. You can extend the blossom of the cadent by just encouraging an extra echo line as I call it. So that's where I will start the pen on the same spot. I'll go wide and then come back into the same point. And that will emphasize that middle orb. If you find that your orb has got a little messy in the middle with cadent, if you find it's just got all too too many pen lines that's just getting a bit messy you can of course just use a little bit of drama and make that a black orb always leave a little bit of white little reflection so it looks like a little black pearl so that's a blossomed cadent so we might switch across to the other side and here we're just going to give it another tangle called ambler chosen ambler because in our lockdown bubbles 
we've been going for lots of walks or lots of ambles around the local area and so I thought it might be quite fun to pop Ambler in here. Now Ambler is quite a small, uh, busy tangle sorry, so, and, but we've got quite a small section to fill in here so you may not manage to get uh, that many parts of this. It's a grid based tangle so we kind of need a grid mm. in a very strange shape so all I'm going to do is take my pen from the edge here of the trinity, the little nook, and I'm going to take the pen down to the opposite side and then to get into a grid, I think I've probably only got room for four here. I'm just going to echo that same trinity line across there. And I've got a little four, oops, sorry, four grids, squares to play with. And Ambler works by then taking each of these grids and drawing, following the line. So I'm following the, the line that already exists and slowly reducing it and heading in and if you want you can include a little bit of sparkle on this by just doing a stop and a start to your line but with Ambler what I tend to do is start at a different corner each time so if you've got an actual grid a square grid this one would you'd start it at a different corner every time you start on your little amble inside and if you want to include a little bit of sparkle, then just have a little pause in your line there. Next one round, so I can't remember where I started now. Oh, well, start here then. I'm going to go up. I'm going to, don't need to make the decision about where these lines are going because I'm actually just inside ordering the line that I already did. So employ a bit of sparkle if you like. And then my last one, I've only got four. Last time I did this, I had six. <laughs> oh well. No mistakes in Zentangle. It's just whatever you choose to fill with. And whoop, there we go. A little bit of Ambler in that very strange shape section. However, I've got one even stranger shape section left. This is this little one that looks like a sort of crescent moon with a, a nose. I was going to say, maybe I should just draw a wee man in the moon, but, but no. This time I was going to do a tango. So a tango that I've chosen is called Hatterwinkle. So that's a tangle of springle and doodles. So what I'm going to do up here, first of all, is we're going to start with the first elemental stroke of toodles, and that is to draw a very lazy S, a very shallow S. So I'm going from the middle of the top section here down to the point of Trinity. And then I'm going to do that little echo line where I start from the same point, but I go wider and come down to the same point. So that would be the first elemental stroke of Toodles. It's also the first elemental stroke of Hatterwinkle. Now we now want to use these two string lines as our guide to tell me where to stop and start. Only this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little aura line that uses this curve as the basis, but I'm going to make it almost like a little petal. So I'm just going to start somewhere near the, the where the string line finishes here, but I'm just going to curve it round, and then I'm going to use that line, this shape, to produce a little petal. And then I'm going to do the same thing again. And you'll find that your string line brings you in to the point of the, that we drew up here. This petal is going to be very small. So I'm using that string line as a guide to give me those shapes. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to again just follow the curve of that string line to guide me. You can make these match up or not. doesn't really matter if you do or don't. And whoop. There we go. So we've now got that all joining into the middle there. So we filled our tangles. It's now time for a little bit of an enhancement or two. So there's a couple of options here, but the as we're working with perfs, no, working with bubbles, I thought we'd have fun with perfs. So perfs are these beautiful little uh, additions to a 
uh, tile or a tangle that uh, you can start to surround them with. So I'll just give you some options here. Here are some options for playing with perf. So uh, obviously two tangles on Amato and Mir actually use perfs going around the outside edge as their, as part of their tangle. Um, but you can use perfs in many different ways. So you can add them just as orbs that just run around the outside edge of a particular tangle. You can make them quite small. You can change the scale. You can make them black. Uh, you could instead of making little orbs, you could do triangles or little curls or little squares or little hearts or little shapes or little seagulls. Um, you can also make them black. So you can add them with a sparkle or a reflection or a solid or an aura or a dotted aura. Lots of different options there. And I thought we'd just have some fun with some different types of perfs now. So obviously we've got a few orbs to play with on this. So Let's just see what we can produce and uh, have some fun with. So here are cool wee options. There is a lovely wee tangle called Caviar and here's a real perf one. So what I might just do is throw a little bit of an element of Caviar into these twink orbs. So all I'm going to do is draw a little orb inside my first one and then fill with a little bit of reflection. If you've got quite tiny orbs here, then feel free to make maybe make them some black pearls. Uh, whoop, oh, actually this one joins on, so maybe I'll do the same repetitive element of a caviar tangle inside one of those tipple orbs. Of course, if you go over slightly, don't panic. It's not a worry in the grand scheme of things. When we finally finished, you're probably not going to notice. Oh, there we go. So I've just thrown in a little bit of drama into those. You might even take that same elemental area and start to decorate my hatter wrinkle. So here again, I might have a little bit of fun with the black, but this time I'm going to do a little slice of white just going across here, just on the edge. So all I'm doing is I'll draw my orb and then I'll leave a little bit of white around that top edge, a little crescent, almost like a crescent on a full moon. It is always a good idea to rotate your tile as you're doing this. It makes it much easier to do that same repetitive stroke as you did on the previous time you did that same element, just by rotating your tile and leaving your drawing hand in the same spot. Oop. And oop, I've got two more, but they're going to be much, much smaller. Okay, Oop, squeeze in there. There we go. Whew. So you could even choose to do the same thing inside the cannon, or you could choose to throw some other type of embellishment in there. I might just have a little play with my perfs by just doing some really tiny ones that just go outside the edge here. And you can subtly have a little bit of fun with changing the scale. So where it's a little bit busier, I might do the perfs a little bit bigger, just towards that center, and then slowly get smaller as I go to the outer edges. It's just one way. I'm not expecting you to copy me. If you come up with a way that you like to do, then by all means, go ahead and have a bit of fun with that. You might also choose to, what have we got? Um, add a bit of drama in here. So I did one tiffle ball with that caviar look. Maybe I'll just choose another one. Do the same thing with one of my Nazeffel shapes. Some people find it easier with the white just to draw at the shape and then fill around it. 
other people or if you're working slightly smaller scale prefer to just do the fill and then leave the white at the edge so I might just choose a couple of these shapes to repeat that same element often you can tie a tile in together with all the different tangle elements just by the simple act of a same repetitive element in more than one tangle so we could choose to do it inside the trenzy or I might just have a little bit of fun here and throw in some other ideas. So I've got my ambler here. So maybe I'll go to the one opposite and actually do that same ambler element on this side. Ooh, tipple was here. So maybe I'll fill some little tipple balls inside this tiny little section space. And this one here, oh, I've got this lovely pearl inside the middle of the blossomed cadent. So maybe I'll just squeeze the little pearl inside the space here. Oh, maybe it's looking a little bit like <laughs> the twink element. Ah, well, just round off those sharp edges there. Every time you do it, you can do something slightly different. Fabulous. So I've included a little bit of embellishment there on the the actual, all the different tangles, and we can repeat them in. You might see very simple things that you then want to add to here. So whether you're wanting to add in a few reflective notes on some of the bigger tipple balls, this is where you can all start to have a little bit of fun and enhance it into your own just trying to think what I might pop out here. Might choose to take perhaps some of those little perfs that I did on the blossoming cadent and just kind of repeat them out through the uh, little stems here of my hatter wrinkle. I haven't got a lot of space there. I'll rotate it round and do that same little embellishment on the other side. So as I'm saying, I'm not expecting you to copy me. If as you begin to get into your little Zentangle flow, things become obvious. Oh, I can do that here. Then by all means, do exactly what you want on yours. Uh, once you finish, think you've finished your tangling for now, then uh, we'll move on to shading. So for the shading, I'm going to grab my 2B pencil and let's just work out where we want to uh, put some uh, shading. So obviously there are lots of different ways to shade. Let me just pop that over there. So I'm talking about inside or outside or a stroke or an element some lines or the tangle or the section you can use it as a background or behind so just thinking about the outside I'm just going to take my pencil and just go around the outside of that tipple balls uh, or on this side I might go on the outside of the trinity so I'm just going to take my pencil very carefully rotate the tile as I go around so that I can keep the point of the pencil where I exactly where I want it to be so I'm not going over that edge and then use your tortillon to gently blend out the graphite I find with a 2B it's a little bit softer pulls out a little bit easier for me if you're not used to that and you're quite happy with a little HB, then that's absolutely fine too. But again, I'm rotating the tile as I constantly go and producing a nice edge for me to be able to follow. I might choose, you might find when you've got a little bit of uh, graphite already on the tortillon that you don't even need to put some graphite down. You can uh, just use your tortillon to blend some out. And you can see here the difference between the tipple now and the twink. It really looks like the tipple is sitting over the uh, twink. I might 
just do the same here going around the edge of my tipple heading into the nazepple I'm just going to use the graphite to really make a step down into the other tangle there we go there so uh, just thinking about why you shade I'll just leave this one on the other on the other side so we've got ways to shade uh, this is why we shade so you're doing it to enhance or to emphasize you're adding depth or contrast you are toning down a busy area so just for an example here just where I've got the inside of my cadent I might just pop a little bit of graphite around the outside edge of the orb there and actually if I then proceed to pull the graphite out in certain directions I actually mellow the busy area of black by adding a little bit there so that tones down your busy areas uh, if you've got a little bit of black area if you actually put some more graphite into it then it actually uh, softens it so you can also soften roundness so where I might be talking about that is if I take my little tipple balls here if I choose to offer to a couple down here if I choose to just put a little smile just with my pencil I'll just do it to these five out around here if I just put a little smile in there so all all my orbs have a wonderful wee smile I'm just going to choose a torture one has got a slightly better point to it here um, I'm just going to then take that smile blend it out I'll put it right across the top leave a little bit of a gap and so you now produce these lovely pearls so take your smile and just use your tortillon to blend it round really smudge that smile but just make sure you leave a little bit of white inside that orb there so that it has a little bit of a reflection going on although shading of course you can do a lot of things that you can't do with a still life drawing uh, Tintangle isn't about making it look like something you do find that you can still use real life drawing techniques to uh, make things look like something it particularly matters with the the tangles a lot of the organic tangles actually look like something so if it actually looks like a plant or looks like a berry those are the ones that tend to lend themselves to shading techniques that you might say follow existing light rules so the other plant like looking tangle here that we might talk about is as I said when I talked about the busy lines or when it looks like something I might just pop a little bit of shading a little bit of graphite just where it's all joining up because you and where there's lots of lines and then use the tortillon to blend the graphite out a little bit but again I might use the idea of following a stroke or an elemental line and so I'm taking the tangle sorry taking the graphite out along one side of those elemental lines that I brought on the hatter wrinkle so a bit of a mixture of both there so just use your tortillon to blend it out and then follow a line up so option there so we've managed to uh, do our roundness the other things of course I was talking about was receding and popping up so that's exactly what we did when we chose to go along one line we recede the two tangles behind it and we pop up the tipple um, it's a good place to uh, hide mistakes so not that we have any but if you do have a line that just kind of went in a bit of a oops direction I'm trying to think where did I have an oops <laughs> uh, okay maybe I'll need to put an oops in uh, but you can use shading to just hide that little oops uh, with a little bit of graphite so I might blend in around this string line here and actually flow it into the edge of the tangle there now that I've drawn it in as I say once you've got graphite on your uh, torsion it's easier to to uh, 
um, blend with it uh, and then we also might pop some in a background so where that sort of where I'm sort of thinking about there is if you we take some of the twink here and if I pop a little bit of graphite in behind those paths just on this one here I can then use the tortillon very flat not holding it like a pencil I'm definitely holding it flat and just pull that graphite out into the background there. There we are. And so I've used it in the background of that particular tangle. You can, of course, use it totally. So I can actually fill a whole area if you like. So I'll just put a little bit of graphite into those particular spots and then actually use my tortillon nice and flat to get it into those angles rotating my tile all the time just to make sure that I've popping it the graphite exactly where I want to get it try not to go over the lines if you do it's fine it may just be your style oh so the last one I haven't got any shading on is this uh, is the ambler so what can be a nice way is to choose uh, a instead of following a line that you've got it maybe just follow a change of direction so if i pop a little bit of graphite just here just where my ambler lines just change direction so we've got one there one there so i've popped a bit of a, a graphite line in and then i'm just going to use my tortillon to just extend that graphite out in one direction so not following it down the other line just following it down one side now that's quite a cool way of um, playing with shading ambler of course the other thing is when you've left there a little bit of sparkle if you pop a little bit of shading which, which side do I want to put it probably this side maybe just put a little bit of shading beside where you had that sparkle it can just enhance the idea of the black and the white or the dark and the light areas so we kind of there oh i've forgotten about the one in the middle dear old trinity so just where your paths cross over and under each other we we'll just put a little bit of graphite down either side and then use the tortillon just to pull it out slightly just as if you were shading holly bough, you will emphasize that over and under nature of the paths that cross each other in the Trinity. If you want to add a little bit of shading down sides, you can as well. Goodness me, you know, just keep going with shading really, can't we? So, uh, I'm not sure, I'll make that one a bit bigger so that the Trinity stands up over the ambler and actually yeah so here we go i might just leave you to your own devices for a bit so if you want to pause the video as you play around with your um with your with your shading here then feel free to just pause me for a moment or two so if you've Pause me and you're back on. If you're still with me, that's all good. We can just do, I was going to say, a little bit of shading just around lifting this hatter wrinkle off the edge. And I'm just going to absorb then the string line that I've got. Or you can choose to add a little bit more with your pen. But I'm just going to lift this up over the top of the tile now. It may well be often when you're shading even if you pull the graphite out sometimes it's a good idea just to throw a little bit back in rather than just pulling all the shading out so that it's all the same depth of graphite sometimes it's a good idea to just add a little bit of shading again at the end to really pull the depth of a of the the graphite or put sorry not pull put the depth of the graphite back in I'll often go back once I've done a little bit of pulling out and just throw a little bit of graphite back in but this time I won't pull it out quite as fast or as far and you get that lovely depth coming through with the graphite. So there is your little bubble or your little Venn diagram. 
but a little bit more organic than we had done before. So what it leaves you to do is um, your final part of Zentangle is to take your tile and just rotate it round. See which way you think might be up. Ooh, not made up my mind here. Uh, ooh. But once you have decided which way is up, then uh, maybe you can't decide which way is up. But somewhere in there, add your little chop or your mark. With mine, I tend to make him pop out from underneath a tangle. So I'm just going to add my little chop onto the end here. And then you can appreciate your little work. Now I've got here a few other little ideas. If I just scrum up here, I can build my own little mosaic. Here are some other ideas of some other bubbles that I had some fun with when I was doing my little bubble string. Can I manage to get the whole mosaic on the picture? I hope so. So here's just a few others that I had a little bit of a play with. And there, I'll just pop the last one. I'm just going to pop. That's the string that I had a bit of a play with. So I hope you've enjoyed the bubble string today with um, tangulations. And um, maybe I'll see you again sometime soon on another video. Have fun. Happy tangling. And just remember, anything is possible. Just one stroke at a time. Happy tangling.